Hey guys, welcome back to the Friday Vlog where we discuss activity that goes on here with the Buzz Weaver channel. That includes things like current events, headlines that are in the news, pop culture, social media technology, and items of interest that come up during the week that allow us to have a little bit of a dialogue for all those on Rumble, BitChute, and Odyssey, of course, as well as fellow YouTubers here on YouTube. It's going to be a very interesting 2022, and I want to thank all of you guys for your continued support. All right, guys, so we start things off from U.S. News. Inflation at 40-year high pressures consumers, Fed, and Biden. Inflation jumped at its fastest pace in nearly 40 years last month, a 7% spike from a year earlier that is increasing household expenses, eating into wages and or eating into wage gains, and heaping pressure on President Joe Biden and the Federal Reserve to address what has become the biggest threat to the U.S. economy. Now, you may remember the biggest threat to the United States when Joe Biden was campaigning was white supremacy. But in reality, the biggest threat that Joe Biden presented to the American people was the fact that he was being elected by the establishment. Now, I also want to just make a quick point here that uh, Representative Tim Scott made an extraordinarily poignant statement today on Fox News. And I think it, it exemplifies a lot of what we talk about here on the Buzzweaver channel. He said, the Democrats want Americans to deny what they can actually see with their own eyes. And it, he couldn't be more accurate because as you guys know, we talk about how Democrats here in this country perceive Americans or most Americans, particularly those that don't agree with them or in their uh, particular uh, tribe as being dumb or unable to understand how society works and functions without their direct influence. And we're seeing this across the board. Now, I want to go back to a point here where it says wage gains because you're hearing about companies or businesses or the left and, and other activists wanting the minimum ra wage raised to $15. Well, this is another concern because anytime you increase wages, the businesses, the industries, and the companies will have to increase their price to offset the cost. Also, we have rising taxes. And when we have rising taxes, that is also when businesses and companies and corporations, mom and pops, have to raise their prices to offset the increase in taxes. So not only do you have a push for wage gains, but you also have increase in taxes, which is creating a strain on the economy. And as you can see here, the overall average minimum wage across the United States, or in particular here in the state of Georgia, is $7.25. You raise that by $8, it becomes 15 and as you can see here, just when I do, this is kind of like the research I do. I just kind of want to share some of the research that I do with you guys. You can kind of see how I do the research. And you can see here, the minimum wage across the United States on average is $7.25. Raising it to 15 or by $8, and I'm rounding off, obviously. I'm not doing the exact math. What states have $15 minimum wages? How many states have a $15 minimum wage as of January 22nd or January 2022? The answer is just one, California. And California, of course, is being ravaged, at least in some areas like San Francisco, by, uh, what is it, Prop 47, um, or one of the policies that was recently passed, where individuals could steal up to $950 and not be prosecuted. So all these things have a strain on the economy. And not only that, but we're not seeing the promises that Joe Biden has made. Now, it's not unusual for a politician to make promises that he can't keep. But when it comes to Joe Biden and or the establishment, we're seeing a great deal of things. But not only is it a lack of them following through with what they have to say, but as uh, Senator Scott said, the American people can see what's happening. We can see what's going on. People can see empty shelves at grocery stores. People can see their taxes going up. People can see retail prices going up. People can see the challenges of trying to buy a new car or a used car or even their heating cost as we're into winter. And it's a very cold winter, particularly here in the South. So all these things are things that cannot be denied. Empty shelves disprove Biden's supply chain boosts. On the menu today, a bit before Christmas, President Biden boasted that he had averted the supply chain crisis. The much predicted crisis didn't occur. Packages are moving. Gifts are being delivered. Shelves are not empty. And White House Chief of Staff Ron Klain called the empty uh, supply chain crisis 
an overhyped narrative. I disagree because reality, evidence, and reality are going to help us out. I, I realize I'm being a bit redundant here, but um, we can see it, right? We can see what's going on. We can we can relate to what's going on because we are experiencing it. And let's just take a look here at some of the headline articles, right? From the Richmond, Virginia ABC affiliate. It could be a dry January for some people, whether whether they were planning in, on it or not, as Virginia ABC stores around the state are still struggling to fill shelves. From the Atlanta CBS affiliate. It's a site that greets many, many going uh, for the weekly grocery shop empty store shelves. And then from Portland, Oregon, if we if we went grocery shopping over the weekend, there's a good chance you notice that some shelves look pretty bare. And we see this across the whole board. Knoxville, Tennessee, uh, Daytona Beach, Florida, uh, Houston, and in Dallas. And I mean, it just goes on and on and on about store shelves being empty. And you can see this across the board right here uh, in this particular article. But here is where it gets even more stunning from the Daily Mail UK. It's like a Soviet store during 1981. Grocery stores across the U.S. have empty shelves as supply chain crisis and COVID combine to make basics like milk, bread, meat, canned soups, and cleaning products hard to find. Now, the other day, there's a particular uh, beverage that I like that uh, a, the local store here sells, and they were out of it. And I asked, uh, I went to customer service and I said, hey, you guys, might you have some of this in the back here? Um, because I, you know, specifically buy this particular soda each time I come here. So, you know, so one of the, one of the individuals came over, one of the managers or whomever was there for the day. And he says, okay, let me go check. Let me check this. And, you know, he did a little scan with his phone and everything showing that, um, you know, there just simply was not any trucks bringing it in. Uh, within the next few days. Now, I went the, to the grocery store the other day, and they did have um, a supply of, of that particular beverage. But the thing being, of course, is that there are shortages. And as Tim Scott said, the Democrats want to deny the reality of what's actually happening. And as we look at some of these amazing pictures, uh, some shelves are seen nearly empty at a grocery store in Washington, D.C. on Monday. And then we have uh, empty shelves as seen inside a Trader Joe's in Court Street in Brooklyn on Tuesday. And, and, of course, this goes on and on and on. This is in Anchorage, Alaska, here in Long Island. And this is absolutely stunning to me. And, of course, you guys have probably already picked up on the fact that I have a cold. Um, I not I don't have any of the symptoms that would be indicative of COVID or, or uh, Omicron or anything like that. I just have a little bit of a cold. I probably picked it up from my nephew, I think. <clears throat> um and as you can see here, this tremendous, extraordinary spike in infections under the administration of Joe Biden, under the under the administration of a group of Democrats who believe that they had this under control. Because as we talked about on Tuesday, when it came to uh, Joe Biden's visit here in Atlanta, the Democrats try to own everything because they want to be seen as the ones who provide the solution. But here you can see, look at the spike. It is absolutely outrageously high compared to any time during President Trump's administration when they were constantly saying how President Trump was causing all of this as though he had some sort of control over it or the lack thereof of trying to control it, which never was the case because he's the one who actually started Project Warp Speed. A lot of people seem to miss that or the media seems to overlook it. But as we see here, inflation from November 2020 to November 2021. Bacon is 21%. I know, I'm a big bacon fan. I buy packs of bacon from Sam's and it usually comes uh, four packs to one pack at Sam's, which is up to almost 18 to $22 for, for four packs of bacon. <laughs> Steak is up, cereals, gasoline, eggs, furniture, laundry equipment, and sporting goods. Now, I'm not out buying any particular sporting goods. I did have some two young, some two young guys came the other day and offered, me, uh, offered to buy my Jetta from me. I should have just, uh, I did tell them to come back, but I might actually sell it. Uh, this week uh, was uh, Biden, uh, Bear Shelf Biden was trending across social media. And any time Joe Biden is trending in a, in a negative fashion, or any Democrat for that matter, or the Democrats as a whole, Twitter goes into a gigantic panic. But it, it's undeniable what we're seeing and what is happening. But this week, 
uh, this was on. This is showing October the fifteenth. When in reality, this was on January uh, the eleventh yesterday, as of this recording, uh, is when we saw Bear Shelf Biden trending once again. And here's Pete Buttigieg, little Pete Buttigieg. Uh, the transport secretary is seen on Tuesday during a tour of the ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach, where he admitted that he he admitted that there was there were issues with the supply chain, but said they were working to overcome them. Okay, Pete, we've been waiting since November for this to happen, right? Okay, so as with the pandemic, people were patient. They waited. They you know the, what was it? 15 days to stop the spread. 30 days to stop the spread. Wear a mask. Wear a double mask. Uh, the vaccines come out. Get vaccinated get double vaccinated, get boosters. So the American people are reaching their limit. They're reaching the point where they're saying, look, you guys are ineffectual. Things aren't happening. We're not getting results. You guys don't have the solutions you claim to have. And there's no one there to stop them. And see, that's the thing that I have to emphasize here is that the Democrats control the House and the Senate. So they have no excuse for not getting things done. Now we have balances of power, and I'm still waiting and anticipating some ruling from the Supreme Court on the vaccine mandate. Because as we've talked about before, the reason it's not been addressed is because Biden has not tried to um, implement it. As you can see here, more empty shelves. This is in Washington, D.C., the very city where the Biden administration resides, Washington, D.C. And then here we have a grocery store additionally in Washington, D.C., and empty shelves, empty shelves. And this article is gigantic. Here's the image from uh from the article we just read from a moment ago um what was that from that was from uh, the national review and there it is right there then we have more images here and in the cost of things that are going up it's just you can't deny this so i, I want to scroll through all this because i want to illustrate to you guys look at this this goes on for a long way the thing about this is is that when it came to president trump when i saw some of my uh classmates and uh, Twitter, Otzi, and, and just uh, across the board, the mainstream media, going after President Trump, it was always over some tabloid issue, over some tabloid thing, you know. Uh, Avenatti, the attorney for um, uh, Stormy Daniels, or, or just uh, President Trump's small hands, or President wears this and the President wears that, or what he likes to eat, or his kids, or Barron, or... Uh, um, you know, his children or his wife, they were just constantly going after these very petty, superficial things because they just hated the man. And for a group of people who say that they're for equality, they're for fairness, they're for justice, they're for, they're, they're for everyone being heard, these people go after President Trump like he's some pariah. And it's just absolutely absurd to see it. So when I put forth my arguments, I like to produce facts. I like to produce tangible information where people can see the actual results. And as we can see here, you know, I don't see my classmates, I don't see a lot of the Twitterazzi posting these images or these pictures or talking about actual tangible things, particularly here, the infection rate just absolutely soaring despite the fact of all the precautions that they took in New York or they took in uh, many Democrat cities or the particular actions that Joe Biden is taking clearly demonstrates that the man is ineffectual, that things are not being done. Whether it's Pete Buttigieg, whether it's uh, Joe Biden himself or anybody in the administration, uh, there are people who are completely disillusioned. And I saw it over the holidays when visiting with family and friends and uh, f family member or friends of the family who were, uh, you know, very anti-Trump, uh, Trump detractors. They're very disillusioned because they didn't vote for Joe Biden per se. Now, granted, uh, technically they voted for Joe Biden, but the reality was they were actually voting against President Trump. And now you're seeing the results of this inflation at 40 year high, uh, consumer prices going up, uh, heating costs are going up. We have instances and situations with China. We have it's situations, instance in Russia. Joe Biden was here in Atlanta this weekend and, and, uh, Stacey Abrams didn't come out to see him because uh, he's getting, uh, there were individuals protesting him here in Atlanta. Uh, the black community, the Hispanic community were out protesting Biden for, uh, I guess, not doing enough for uh, voter rights, although we can vote in Georgia. There's no problems there. I think we'll get early voting in June. But uh, that's what I have for you guys this Friday. All right, guys. So that's going to wrap it up for this Friday vlog. Thank you for the likes, the shares, and the comments here on YouTube, as well as BitChute, Odyssey, and Rumble. Your guys' support is always appreciated. And, of course, we're still charging into 
2022, so you will see some uh, Battlefield videos as well. I'm very encouraged uh, to be back and playing after six years of waiting for a modern to futuristic shooter. <laughs> uh, so uh, I'm kind of happy about that. But nonetheless, guys, it's been a great week this week. And I'm looking forward to continuing into more production here on the channel in 2022. But I want to thank all of you guys, of course, for all of your support. And below this video, you can find the various social media links to my social media, of course. And appearing there on the screen, that would be the channel icon to subscribe here on YouTube and or the red button below the video to the right. You guys can click on that to subscribe as well as selecting notifications to let you know when there is content here on the channel. And I'll see all you guys right there behind that camera next week.